Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let me start with a great big thank you uh, to all of our musicians. Uh, they are spectacular and wonderful, and I'm only a little biased because only one of them is related to me, and that by marriage. So uh, thank you so much for our musicians and singers. Let's give them a big round of applause. All right. Thank you also to our scripture readers. Appreciate it. Job well done. We did it without any feedback or explosions. Praise God. <laughs> and lastly, thank you all for being here tonight. I know there is a plethora of worship services, uh, at least one other that I'm aware of within probably 300 yards. So <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys are here to worship with us uh, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And so for y'all who are not regulars here over this Advent season, that's the four weeks leading up to Christmas, uh, we have been uh, in our series talking about peace. And I began the series by asking, who feels that they are really, truly at peace? Interestingly, very few, if any, hands went up. And so I wonder for our guests, I won't put you on the spot, but in your minds, answer that question for yourself. Are you at peace? Something that we talked a lot about uh, is the fact that the world is missing peace, and that's no secret, right? We all have TV and the internet, and you know, every time you look around, things are tense. You know, we have uh, political tension in our own country. We have war on two different continents. Uh, even here, it seems like in secluded rural Kansas, somehow anxiety is at an all-time high. And the truth is that we could all use a little more peace right now. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Amen. Yeah. Amen. There we go. Hey, we do audience participation in this church, so <laughs> keep it coming. <clears throat> the good news is, for those of us who have made Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, we can have peace. Indeed, that is the purpose for which Christ came. Say perfect peace. Who remembers what that translates? Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Good participation from our regulars. Right, and, and this means uh, perfect peace. This is the, the peace that surpasses understanding. Right. This is God's peace. This is divine peace. This is the peace that puts us at rest, even in the worst of circumstances. And it is available to us because Christ is the Prince of Peace. Indeed, this is what we are celebrating here tonight. That is the birth of Jesus Christ. The Prince of Peace left heaven, entered into time and space, became a human in order to give us peace. To give us perfect peace. The two of our scriptures tonight mentioned peace, so let me take each one of them very briefly in turn. The first one is Isaiah 9, 2 and 7, uh, that Tim read for us. And this was prophesied a little more than 700 years before Christ was born. In the southern kingdom of Israel, Judah, they were in big trouble. And they were facing down a large army and certain annihilation. Indeed, if you know the story, you know they were hauled off to captivity in Babylon for some 70 years. And the Lord spoke to them before that event through his prophet Isaiah. And he told them to have hope. He told them of the coming ruler, this Messiah to come, who would be the prince of peace. And his kingdom would be one of peace. And this coming ruler is Jesus Christ. And when he returns, he will establish his kingdom, and it will be great. And to it there will be no end, and there will be perfect peace continuously for all. And see, this is our focus as we look forward to Christ's next coming. There's more to the story, but Advent actually is about the next coming. And then we arrive to Christmas, which is what we're doing here today, to celebrate Christ's first coming, the first Advent of the Prince of Peace who came into time, born of a virgin, laid in a manger. And the Prince of of peace came into the world in this most unassuming way, and yet he was announced by angels. 
And this takes me to the second scripture I want to mention today from Luke 2.14. This is a great host praising God, saying glory to God. Say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on peace and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. What I want to point out here is on whom this proclaimed peace falls. It is on whom his favor rests. Uh, some translations say with whom he, God that is, is pleased. Say pleased. Pleased. What is one sure way that you know of to please God? No volunteers. By believing in Jesus. Thank you. Making Jesus your Lord and Savior. And that's the deal here. That is on whom he is pleased, or on whom his favor rests, with whom he is pleased. It is those who have placed saving faith in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus was born as Prince of Peace to bring peace to those who accept him as Savior. And the peace he offers is real peace. And it is present peace. It is for us in the here and now. And so just as you heard with our children's message, Jesus gives us peace. And it's so interesting to me that after every single one of his miracles throughout the Gospels, he's always saying things to people like, go in peace, or peace be with you, or be at peace. And you're scratching your head going, well, this dude didn't walk for 30 years, and now he's walking, and all you can say is, hey, you're healed, go in peace. But it's no wonder because Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and he came to bring peace to humanity. And so here we are to celebrate this insane historical event, the birth of a baby who is the Prince of Peace. The world needs peace as much now as it ever did. And ultimately, it's because the world has chosen to reject Jesus. The truth is that humanity was created to have a relationship with God to be at perfect peace with him. But evil entered the world through Adam and Eve, and their sin broke that relationship with God. And so the betwees, the peace between God and humanity was shattered. And so being the loving God that he was, he sent his son Jesus to take on the sin of the world and die for our sins, and those who believe in him may have Eternal life. Eternal life. Praise God, but also peace. Thank you, JT. He's paying attention. Those who believe in Christ have a restored relationship with God. And there is now for us peace between God and ourselves. The world has no peace because it rejected Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And the only way to restore the peace in the world is for the world to accept Jesus, to restore the broken relationship with God. Now, last time I checked, that isn't going to happen until Christ returns. So in the meantime, it's up to us to live in such a way as to reflect that peace, as to reflect the light and love of our Savior. And so, friends, we can have peace in our lives because we have the Prince of Peace. And his peace is not only for the coming kingdom, but also for the here and now. Jesus said, I came so that you may have life and have it abundantly. And this peace is a part of the abundant life which Christ came and died to give us. And it is for those who believe that he is their Lord and Savior. And so, if you need more peace in this season, turn to the Prince of Peace. Accept him as your Lord and Savior if you have not, and if you have already, turn to him. Cast your cares upon him. Draw near to him. Experience his perfect peace anew. Because the truth is, there is nothing, as Paul tells us, nothing, not height, nor depth, nor length, nor width, or anything anywhere that can separate us from the love of our Lord God through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we celebrate Jesus' birth tonight and tomorrow morning, let us uh, uh, be anew, renewed, exhilarated with the Prince of Peace and the peace that we have in him. As we celebrate his birth, the birth of our Savior Jesus, let us also experience the peace that we have with God. Would you pray with me?
Lord our God, thank you that you are the God who loved us so much that you left heaven, took on our sin, and died so that we could have peace between you and us. Lord, as we are gathered to celebrate Jesus' birthday, let us reflect again on the mystery of the virgin birth of the baby Jesus, fully God and fully man, of this little one who was born in order to die for our sin. And allow us to meditate again on the renewed peace that we have between yourself and us and allow us to live in such a way as to exemplify that peace to a watching world that they may see clearly the love of your son. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.